Shalom, all praise be unto you. How about you? How about you? How about you? Double honor unto the elder apostles, the elder bishops, that great millstone who are well to us is truth. Salutes unto the Arkham who continue to push the word in truth and in sincerity. And, um, you know, just just uh, a few topics I want to speak on, man. Um, you know, the, the narrowness, the straight gate of the truth. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, and a, a few uh, concepts on hardships and how the Lord, you know, gets us through things, you know, you know, early hours this morning, you know, late last night slash early hours this morning, I was meditating on a few things, man, and, you know, the scripture was written for our learning, right? Oftentimes in scripture, the Lord never delivered people from things, you know, but he delivered them in it, and uh, that's pretty much the uh, the thought I want to focus on, man. You know, oftentimes we're not delivered from things, but we're delivered in it. You know, and it's this perspective um, that we look at things from can really affect, um, you know, number one, our overall outcome. And number two, our ability to take things cheerfully, you know. But anyways, this is Second Ezra chapter 7. I'll start out here. And I'll, I'll start at verse, verse 2. And he said unto me, up Ezra's, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, speak on. Speak on my power. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep and great, but put the case, the entrance, were narrow like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it, if he went not through the narrow, but could he come into the broad? There's also another city, another thing, so like a city is builded and set upon a broad field. And it's full of all good things. This is representing the kingdom of heaven. Right? Paradise. You know. Which is a joy. You know. The kingdom. The rulership. You know. The power. You know. Joint ears with the Lord. Okay. The opposite of us being in slavery. Uh, the entrance thereof is narrow. And it's set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if, uh, like as if there were a fire on the right hand, and on the left a deep water, and one only path between them both. So look, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. <clears throat> So, the kingdom of heaven is a is a tricky, narrow path, man. You know, whereby every step taken um, has to be taken with caution. You know, one wrong step, and you could fall to the right of this narrow path, and you you could fall to the left. You know, but but fall into the right, there's fire. Fall into the left, there's a deep water, man. So either way. If, if you fall off, you're not going to make it to the broad field, you know, which is full of all good things, as it says in verse 6. So, you know, this truth isn't to be taken lightly, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's deadly serious, man. You know, excuse the pun, but, you know, when the seriousness is... Is subtracted from the situation, you know, that, that can equal in a, a war equal in death, man, on this side. So it is a deadly serious situation, you know. And uh, the straight gate, man, you know, you hear the word straight, position of difficulty. So things happen, man, you know. Things happen, man. So, at the end of the day, you know, we got to remember, 
what 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 we're actually involved in, you know. Now what I wanna do is um that being said I wanna I wanna uh, let's see if I go um to the book of Daniel. Actually no what no. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh, Second Corinthians, bear me one second. Yes, Second Corinthians twelve. Right, you know, an example of a, uh, you know, being you know delivered in something opposed to be being delivered from something. You know that spells grace. That equals grace, man. You know, this is Second Corinthians 12. And uh, I'll start from verse 5. Of such and one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, you know, because he, he was getting dealt with on a high level by Yahweh Shai, so you, know, you want to get exalted ahead of himself. Apostle Paul so it says, There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, you know. And I thought that, you know, that shows us that sicknesses are demons, man. Now, there's a various amount of speculations out there. Some scholars say it was an eye issue. Others say it was other things. You know, but whatever it was, it was a demon in the form of a sickness. Okay, because it says here, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. You know. So the demon was attached to Apostle Paul that pretty much never came off, you know, of him. You know. To buffet him, meaning to balance him out, you know, to keep him humble. Because, again, he was getting dealt with on an extremely high level, you know, by the Lord. So one could, you know, start feeling themselves a bit too much because they're clearly on a level. So to keep Apostle Paul humble, to buffet him out, to balance him out, he was given... Uh, a sickness man and that demon stayed on him in the form of that sickness lest I should be exalted above measure for this thing I besought the Lord th uh, thrice he prayed to the Lord three times man you know and that you know you know that weren't no little oh behind by Shimon Shai Baba Kasha Baba Kasha I reply to them you know you know just heal my body you know probably which, which is a brilliant prayer and we use but you know, you know, Apostle Paul probably, probably fasted about it. You know, prayed and fasted. You know, begged the Lord intensely, man, on three separate occasions. You know. You know, he probably even said, "Man, if you take the this this uh sickness away, I'll be able to go even harder for the truth." You know, <laughs> you know, explaining himself, begging the Lord, man, that it might depart from me. You know, but the answer was, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. You know, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Yahweh shall may rest upon me. So, so therefore, we can see that Apostle Paul wasn't delivered from his infirmities. But rather through grace, he was delivered in it, you know. Despite his surroundings, you know, he, his mindset was above, you know. 
and often times, often times, the Most High, through His Son Yahweh Shai, has dealt with His prophets this way, as He did here with the Apostle Paul. You know, He could have easily um, retracted the messenger of Satan and taken away the sickness from Apostle Paul. That's an easy thing to do, you know, but He rather kept. The messenger of Satan upon him in the form of a sickness. So that what? So that he could be one buffeted. But also that he could understand that the grace of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai is sufficient. You know. Because as men. You know. And even the few sisters. We're, we're mortals man. You know. And a lot of our decision making and emotions. Yes even men. You know. Is somewhat based around the current situation we're in, based around the present si the situation we just came from, the very recent past, or the very near future of the situation we anticipate to be in, you know. Because we're subject to time, you know. We're subject to time, right? Now, as we grow in this truth, especially us men, we adopt a more stoic. Um, mindset, you know, removing the, the the pleasure and emotions out of things, but rather we move towards something called telos in Greek, um, which means purpose. We move towards purpose and duty, you know. Um, you know, you get into philosophy, you know, not philosophies, but the study of philosophy, all these Jakes, Aristotle. You know, I, um, I did a bit of that Aristotle, Plato, um, Gamaliel, you know, all these different dudes, you know, they were actually uh, Jakes, man. You know, but when they teach you about it in the school system, you know, they'll make it out. These are Greek, you know, Greeks, you know, all kind of stuff. And these are Jakes. And pretty much when you read their, their, their thoughts and their writings, they're just writing the scriptures also already been written but in a different way in a roundabout way because the truth it was always in our people man but when you read these philosophers and 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 uh you know um things of that nature right we see that um real men are, are focused on duty you know telos which is purpose duty and what ought to be done rather the effeminate man slash actual woman thinks on and acts upon uh what they want to do based on the current moment okay now even a stoic man to some degree is going to have to operate according to the recent past the present or the near future why because we're subject to time but the most size is subject to time time itself is a creation of the most size so he works outside of time you know so the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee, you know. And again, being delivered in something opposed to be, being delivered from something. When you're delivered from something, it's for your benefit, for your ease, you know. To be palatable to your mouth, you know, in your eyes, in your ears. You know, being delivered from something is selfish, all right? Now, that can be in a good sense and that can be in a bad sense, okay? Because when we're ultimately delivered, we're going to be taken out of here because we want to get saved. There is the level of good selfishness, if you want. But when we talk about, that's the overall goal, but when we talk about day-to-day -day trials and tribulations, it's not so much about us being delivered from the situation it's about us being delivered in the situation so that the strength of your Hawashai can be shown. All right. And that's the level we need to get to and maintain whereby understanding being delivered in it is for the glory of your Hawashai, your opposed to being delivered from it, which just makes your current situation a little bit more easier on the flesh. You know, okay. The Lord never said to him, oh, my grace is sufficient for thee. And then, you know, don't worry, you'll be fine. Just cope with the pain. 
That's focusing on Apostle Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So in our weakness, by the Lord delivering us in it, a.k.a. grace, giving us the understanding that his grace is sufficient to carry us through, despite being in the situation where Satan, where the messenger of Satan may be upon us, all right, the grace of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai is deliverance in the situation so that his power and glory can be perfected in our current weak situation. All right, so therefore, we're to praise, man. Most gladly, therefore, I most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Yahweh Shai may rest upon me, you know. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Yahweh Shai's sake. For when I am weak, then I, am I strong. That is the definition of being delivered in something, which is grace, versus delivered from it. As I said, it would have been very easy for the Lord to take the thorn of Apostle Paul away. The messenger of Satan could have been retracted quicker than the blink of an eye. But that wasn't the case because that would have delivered him from the situation for his bodily ease, you know. But to receive grace, right, in return, gives gives a, a, a glorification unto how by Shemi Al Shai, all right. Or well, maybe uh, that's not a uh, good enough of an example. All right, let's get them them free Hebrew boys. <laughs> you know, maybe Paul wasn't doing it for you. All right, then let's see what, what, what a, uh, you know, um, you know, the, these men are saying, okay, so this is Daniel chapter three verse fifteen. You know, now if he be ready, that at what time he hear, the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery. And those him and all kinds of music, ye shall you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, ye, ye shall be cast in the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that power that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which is their um, Babylonian names. You know, Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah were their Hebrew names. Um, answered and said unto the king of Nebuchadnezzar, We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. Okay, you know, and that's the, the, the reason I bring this out is because this shows again the perspectives of the situation. They said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. They understood both sides. The Lord could deliver them from it, as in they wouldn't even end up in the fiery furnace. There's that perspective. But then there's also the perspective of we know that our God is so powerful that he can, you, he can allow you to, to put us in the fiery furnace. Okay? The last account, your mind should be thinking of the messenger of Satan, yeah? You just, the phone can be in me. The phone can be on me. You can throw me in the fire. I can be surrounded by the flames, yeah? But my current situation and reality, what I see around me, yeah, it doesn't have to be my ultimate reality based upon my faith in my God. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Who is powerful above all. You can put me in the furnace. I don't have to be subject to the conditions of the furnace. If it be the will of my father. Through his son. And he will deliver us out of thine hand. Alright. You can be in the furnace and delivered from it. You can receive mercy. Alright. In the murky situation. Alright. You can receive grace in the gutter. 
These, these, these are the concepts. These are the perspectives we ought to adapt. You can be going through some fucking bullshit, man. All right. Let me just say it like that. All right. A piece of shit situation may be happening. All right. By the end of the day, the perspective should be that our God is greater, man. You know, our God, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, our power is above all. All right. He is the sovereign. He is the most high. He is the one and only. Okay. Oftentimes we become idolaters because we moan in situations to the point where we feel as if there's other powers at play other than Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. The scripture says we were to say in the morning, in the evening, and at noon. Sorry, in the morning, at noon, and at evening, talk of these things with our children. All right. When we, when we rise up and when we lay down, the Shammai, an important blessing and the evoking of the presence, the panya, the face, the presence, the, the, the glow, the energy, the spirit of Yahweh, where Yahweh Shai would be evoked. All right. When we recited the Shammai. Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Shema, Yasha'Allah, Yahuwah, Lachayanawa, Yahuwah, Echad, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power, the Lord is one. There is no other deity. The Lord, Yahuwah, Shemi, Yashai, is Echad, is one. Right? So when we ascribe power to situations as if there's other powers at play, that's a form of idolatry, man. All right? That's why excessive worrying is a sin. Essentially, because you're as you're ascribing worship. If you really want to get down to the nooks and cranny of it, you're really ascribing a form of worship and fear to something that don't exist, aka an idol. When the fear and faith should be poured straight back into our maker, you know, Yahweh Bashim Shai. I'm going through this fucked up situation, but I fear you, you know. I'm going through this fucked up situation, but my faith is in you. But excessive worrying has us divert our spiritual eyes from the one who we should fear and have faith in. And then we start looking at things that don't exist, but illusions and ascribing power and fear and faith in those things in a negative light. So even excessive worrying is, is a form of, of idolatry. Worshipping other false gods, man. Okay? And this was exactly why Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were cast into uh, the fiery furnace. Because they refused to worship the false god that was right there in their face. The problem was the idol. The problem was the music. The problem was bowing the knee to the idol. All these things, these different components came together as one. And there was a consequence. Okay, but when the consequence can't be overcome, you and I have taken our eyes off the one who has overcome. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. When you take your eyes off your whole shy, everything goes to shit. You know, it says it here in verse 17 if it be so, our power whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. So they understood they're going to end up in there, you know. They, they knew they was going to end up in there. But if it be his will, they don't have to be subject. They don't have to be subject to the current um, reality they found them, themselves in. Okay. You know. And he will deliver us out of that hand, O king. But if not. Be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they understood our God can deliver us, or he can allow us to die. But we rather die and fear our God, all right, than succumb and live for a little season longer and worship your golden image. And at that point, brothers, and I speak to myself first and foremost, but it's at that point when we show that kind of faith where we're willing to lose it all, we are counted as friends of the Lord, man. I no longer call you disciples, but I call you friends. When you've got to the point where you're willing to say, I will literally die. I'll lose everything I have and die 
for the sake of my integrity towards my power, that's when the Most High intervenes. All right, you want another example? How about Abraham? Kill thy son, thy only son. The dagger was raised in the air. He was about to come down and thrust it into Isaac. And the angel of the Lord shouted unto him, you know. The Lord, the, the Lord pushed Abraham to the point of two more seconds and a little bit of force. And he would have inserted a sharp weapon into his own son. To please his God, to please his power. When you get to that stage, the Lord intervenes. Okay. You know. These 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 are these are scriptural gems that we have to meditate on when we ourselves are going through things. Okay. You know, these he three Hebrew boys, as they say, they 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 were they were they they were ready to step into the fire and they did, they got thrown into it, you know. Okay, and they, you know, and, 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 and when you show more faith, Satan turns up the heat. There goes the messenger of Satan again, you know. The more you're into the truth, the more you give to the truth, the more things go wrong in your personal life, the more your health can deteriorate. Various things, why? Because the demons, the messenger of Satan are pissed. They're vexed, all right, that you're going against their agenda, man, you know. Verse 19, then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his vision was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated, you know. So when you show faith, Satan gets more angry, man. You know, he goes harder, all right. You know, this is why the scriptures speak about the shield of faith, all right. Shields ward off, um... Ward off uh, the, the, the blows of arrows and swords, man, and spears, okay? So the, the, the shield of faith is that no matter how bad and, and progressively worse situations get, you know, we, we, it's fought off through faith, man, in that the Lord can deliver me in this opposed to deliver me from this, you know? Certain things are going to be the case. Until the Lord comes back, man. You know. As they say, you can't have your cake and eat it, man. The ultimate thing we want to be pulled out of is this world. Alright. When Yahweh Shai comes back, man. That's what we want to be pulled out of. But other than that, until then, our personal trials and tribulations, we have to understand not every single thing we're going to be removed from. But we're missing the point. It's not about being removed from every single situation. It's about receiving grace in these situations, okay? Some things, some of your personal, you know your personal issues, you know your personal struggles, I know mine, you know, and there could hell be more to come until the Lord comes back. But it's not everything you're going to be delivered from. It's not everything you, 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 you're going to be extracted from that bad situation. But it's about receiving grace. Being delivered in something, which is grace, opposed to being delivered from something. The perspectives can go such a long way, you know. That's why people start doubting, oh, I don't believe in God. And if God was real, why would he do that? And yeah, your perspective's wrong, alright? Because your focus is on yourself, not on the glory and power ascribed unto your whole by Shem that in weakness, my strength is perfected. We just read it. Alright. Now I want to jump down. Um, I want to jump down to verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Now I'm not going to get it, but the scriptures speak about um, in the Apocrypha a cool moist. <laughs> oh man. See when you when you stand when you stand firm for the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord takes the piss out of the enemy, man. You know, I've got personal examples of that. I'm sure you brothers do. There's examples in the scriptures, man. When you stand firm for the Lord, the Lord takes the piss out of your enemies. A cool moist, you didn't know, burn in fire, but they were feeling a cool moist. <laughs> wow. Anyways, um the Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, meaning astonished, 
shocked and rose in up in haste and spake and said unto his counsellors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said uh, unto the king, true O king, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the son of the most high. You know? So, Yahushai was that fourth uh, man. Okay? Even the heathen, yeah, man, even the heathen will acknowledge, yeah, that in the hell they put you through, you're different, man. All right? The bastard them will acknowledge and accept, man. All right? You know, understand, brothers, until the Lord comes back, you are the closest version to Yahweh Shai many people will see. Yeah? Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Yeah, that's going to happen ultimately when Yahweh Shai comes back. All right? But until then, you are the closest thing to Yahweh Shai many people will see. All right? If you start crumbling when the adversity comes, you're misrepresenting the Lord. I would be misrepresenting the Lord. You want to go through some fucked up situations and uphold your integrity, people will start to confess. There's something different about this, this man. Well, I wonder what he's into. I wonder what God he serves. Yeah? Nebuchadnezzar himself identified the fourth is like the son of the highest, man. Okay? And they was walking up and down there talking, man. They wasn't jumping and squealing and crying because they weren't getting burnt. Their hairs weren't singed, as the scripture says. Their clothes never smelled like smoke. They weren't worrying. They was walking up and down, talking calmly in the midst of physical fire. What does that show us, man? What does that show us, right? That shows us that when your house shy turns upon the scene, all right? It's not always to deliver you from the fiery flames, but it's to deliver you in it and to provide grace in it, okay? Some situations won't go away, not even until the Lord comes back. That's, that's fine. It's not about being taken out of the furnace, yeah? It's about being comfortable in the heat because you know the fourth man is with you. There goes that numerology, that fourth uh, um, number, number four, represents what? Um, represents mercy, you know? Represents mercy, four represents mercy, man, all right? It's not about being extracted from the situation, it's about having mercy and grace to be delivered in the situation. That's a mindset thing. But that's first a faith thing, all right? You know, they never spoke of, they never got in the fire, then spoke of their faith. They declared their faith, then got thrown in the fire, you know? Okay. So when they was in the heat, they was chilling. They was chilling because they already done, declared their faith, man. You know? They, they declared their faith, and this is what we're doing out here, man. You know? Whilst everyone's chilling, we're declaring our faith. We do these videos, we go to the highways and the byways, we do this work, man. But when the fire comes upon this earth, Abu Razar, we're going to be chilling. We're going to be chilling, man. You know? You know? Enter into thy chambers for a little season until the indignation be overpassed, man. You know? We're going to be del delivered in the fires, man. You know? Okay, so it's a mindset thing, you know, perhaps it's a few thoughts for us to meditate upon, man. It's not always about being delivered from the situation, but being delivered in it, aka grace and mercy being applied to our individual lives, right? And there's multiple more examples, but these are just two that we can ponder upon, man, you know. It's not always about being taken out of the situation, 
but it's about being given what it takes to enjoy the situation. So with that, hopefully it was edifying. I'll catch you in the next one. Shalom.